What if I told you I caught Coach Riley hitting his players at practice Thursday? You are Locked On Trojans, your daily podcast on the USC Trojans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fight on, everyone. I'm your host, Mark Holkin, and thank you for making Locked On USC part of the Locked On Network, your first listen every day. Whether you're watching the show on YouTube or wherever you want to download your podcast, this show is free. I really do appreciate your support. This episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? On Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. All right, before everybody starts recording Lincoln Riley, relax, calm down. I'll get to that in a second. Team was back at practice Thursday afternoon, spring camp, practice number five. We got 10 more to go, and that includes the spring game. Look, I'm not sure what described your perfect day, but it's not going to beat 75 degrees, blue skies, and Lincoln Riley smiling on his way to practice. But he was in one of those moods. Yes. He was getting physical with the players on the defensive side of the ball. He was hitting them with a pad. I'll get to that here momentarily. Look, he's heading out to practice. And you know what? Let me put up some video that you guys can watch while I talk. How's that? Are we working here? Are we going to work today, guys? There we go. Let's try it now. There we go. All right technical difficulties here. I apologize. So you can see the players coming through. I'll do some net narration while you're watching. Um, again, when Lincoln Riley comes out, says hello to the media, he's got this big smile on his face. You know the Chester Sire cat smile? It's not really a, it's that, that smile that the, the cat gives you when they just swallowed the canary. It's not quite an evil smile. Um, it's that kind of smile if you have a younger brother or even an older brother who would, you know, I'll look at you a funny smile and all of a sudden give you a smack on the head before they run off the other direction. That's what that's the kind of smile that Lincoln Riley had. I, like I said, he's been really involved on the defensive side of the ball, at least for the first part of practice that the media gets to watch. Uh, really focus on those defensive groups. So he had that smile. He gets into the practice. He puts on those one of those yellow um, blocking pads. And I'm watching him smack the players. You know, they're going through some drills. And he was getting into it. He's all, he was having a lot of fun getting physical, hitting the players. So, uh, again, nothing nefarious. I'm going to get that out of the way. <laughs> and you'll probably see it shortly on YouTube when we go to the next segment. Um, you'll you'll see some of the drill work that's going through. You can see Coach Eric Henderson walking up there, all cardinal blinged out. He's also wearing some Oakley shades. I think that's going to be a new thing, that new fad. Check it out. <clears throat> As you can see, the team coming up. They're in full pads on uh, on Thursday. Offense wears cardinal. Uh, special teams as well. Defense is wearing the white jerseys. You can see a few of the defensive guys coming up there. And as these guys are coming out, when you're watching the video, check out <laughs> the freshman duo, Elijah Newby, Cameron Fountain. One of the traditions uh, when you're on your way to practice as a player, as a coach, you can see Anthony Jones there doing it for us. You tap the Trojan sword. Well, most players make the effort just a simple grab at the handle as they walk on by. You have the two freshmen. They were practicing their entrance. You can tell. Um, and you'll see it. They're, they're kind of going through their, I don't know, celebratory uh, handshake type of thing before they touch it. You got Mason Cobb, Elijah Hughes, and Jade Abasiri. There's uh, some young defensive linemen there. What I like about this, so you see those guys go through their routine. Right behind them, you have a, you know, Redshirt Jr., I think, uh, Fourth-year player, John Humphrey, the cornerback transfer from UCLA. He just does it the old-fashioned way, touching up on the uh, Trojan sword. 
what I what you get out of this type of thing is you see the personalities of the players. They they start to come out, and you hear little things. And sometimes they want you to hear things. They'll say things that they want you to report about. Cooper Lovelace notorious for that. <laughs> um, oh, here's an interesting note on Eric Henderson. One USC staffer told me that uh, he heard Eric Henderson say, "Quote." He's going to recruit the greatest USC defensive line in the history of USC. My response, dear God, from his lips to your ears before I die. I want to see that happen. There you saw it. Fountain, newbie, Humphrey doing their thing. Dennis Lynch, uh, he had a rough season in 2023. He, look, he was really good from deep. Three for three for 50 yards plus, right? He struggled with the chip shots. But no matter what, I love when he comes up on his way to practice. He makes sure to show the proper respect to the All-American wall. And he he touches up on each plaque of the players that he's played with during his time at USC. Occasionally, you'll see players heading back into the locker room uh, after they've made their way out to practice. It's usually because they've, you know, they forgot to bring out a knee brace or, you know, knee pads, something that... They know they're supposed to bring with them. This time, I'm watching backup punter, kicker, uh, Garth White, number 98. He's going back to the locker room, and when he reemerges, he's got a couple of those black kickoff tees that the kickers use. I'm thinking, how did you forget those? How does that happen? You've got one tool. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, by the way, you'll notice the helmets. Some of them have the red uh, pad foams. The red foam pads on top. Um, the ones that don't, you'll notice nobody yet has been gold plated on their helmets. Uh, this is also going to be a very big um, recruiting weekend. Four star linebacker, Matai Tagoai. Uh, he was on an, his second unofficial visit this week at USC. Look, he's not really big, but he's fast. And when you look at his frame, uh, he's got the type of frame that you can add the type of weight that the staff wants. He's like, what, 6'1", 6'2", six six about 170 pounds, 190 pounds maybe. But um, it wasn't that long ago that the, the prospect from San Clemente wasn't sure if USC was a place for him. Allegedly. Isaiah Rakes, number two, big dude. Um, but then Coach Matt Ench arrived. Coach Eric Henderson, Danton Lynn, coaching staff change on the defense side of the ball. Everything changed. I would not be surprised if he recruits, or excuse me, if he, if he commits this weekend, because I, I believe he'll be uh, attending practice on Saturday as well. Um, so not he wasn't the only prospect on campus. There was a 2027 uh, guy, defensive lineman Jameer Henry. He's from Detroit, Michigan. Oh, check out Caleb Williams, Jacoby Lane. Um, one of the uh, USC paparazzi guys, they asked one of them, if both of them, if they would uh, give a quick shout out to the women of Troy who are playing up in the Sweet 16 up in Portland. Uh, Caleb said, you know what, Jacoby? It's your turn. Take over. Your team now. Speaking of this recruiting weekend, uh, there's going to be close to 700 coaches on campus for Lincoln Riley's coaching clinic. And they're going to have to get a really big tent out there because the uh, weather forecast is rain again. I asked Annie, Annie Hansen, I said, do they make a tent big enough for 700 coaches? <laughs> Anyways, last weekend when they got those commitments, um, the rain didn't seem to hold anything back. So it worked one time. It'll work again. So. As I said on yesterday's episode of Locked on USC, I dare this coaching staff to repeat their performance from a weekend ago. Make it happen. I challenge you. Do down the gauntlet. Caleb Williams, Caleb Bullock, Keon Bars, they were all hanging out watching practice. I mentioned Caleb and Jacoby. You saw them. By the way, number 71, if you can see him, that's Jason Zandamela, future center for USC. Big boy. Deuce Robinson, yeah, he was uh, he was pulling a double header on Thursday. Football first, then baseball. Uh, I don't know what time the actual baseball game started. I do know they won in a walk-off fashion. But when practice ended close to 5 o'clock, 
The team bus was still an hour and a half away from taking them down to Irvine. First pitch, 6.30 p.m. Good luck. The laws of nature, laws of physics saying they weren't going to be on time. Uh, I pointed out Isaiah Rakes on uh, when he was coming in, heading to practice. On, he, he talked after practice, and he, this was his decision to transfer to USC. I knew their defense had a need for a defensive lineman, and I wanted to come into somewhere where I felt like I could make a difference right away. Once I found out they were hiring Coach Lynn, that was definitely a big factor, close quote. You know who else was at practice? Remember uh, wide receiver Kyle Ford? I'm going to talk about that in the third segment in my Friday rant. It has nothing to do with Kyle. I'm not ranting about Kyle. I'm not ranting about the situation regarding Kyle. Um, so we showed up to practice and I, look, I've known Kyle since he was in high school, gave him, you know, we each gave each other the bro hug and I asked him, Hey, are you using your mulligan? You coming back to USC? I asked him that question that way because he likes to golf in his, in his spare time. So he knew exactly what I was saying. Basically, he just lapped it off <laughs> and, uh, I didn't find out the answer, but it is curious. Why was he hanging out of practice? He is in the transfer portal. Keep that in mind. I really do hope that he finds a place to play, though. I just don't know if he would have a role here at USC. Not unless he's willing to battle those four younger wide receivers um, who did not leave the team unexpectedly a year ago. Still like Kyle a lot. Good dude. Uh, oh, during uh, one of the defensive back drills, uh, the safety combination, I noticed this. And I should probably hold this over to the second segment. I'll get out of the way now. Achille Arnold, Kamari Ramsey, and Prophet Brown. Um, Prophet Brown was the nickel in that trio. Achille and Kamari, uh, the safety combination. I asked Achille after practice, you know, where are you mainly, um, where, where do they have you focusing most of your attention? And uh, he was kind of noncommittal. He said he's learning both spots. So again, I, I also spoke with both of the uh, well, both of the Arnold brothers spoke after practice um, with the media. Very outgoing, gregarious guys, team leaders. Everyone's going to like them. Oh yeah, looks like the that ended. So people remove that one. Can bring me back here. All right, last thing on this segment before we uh, we take a little mini break here. Um, I asked Kamari Ramsey after practice, you know, about going through the slow install for a second time. And here's what he had to say. He, his answer was, look, I act like I'm learning the defense for the first time. I don't try and act like I know everything. Um, he, he said he also loves the knowledge that Coach Mays is bringing to the safety room. I asked him specifically, I said, you know, what does Taylor bring? And he got a big smile on his face, like, learning a lot from that guy. He's a legend. All right, I got more from Spring Camp, segment two coming up. But first, let's do this. This episode is brought to you by the Spring Cleaning Champions, Manscaped. This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leaders in below-the-waist grooming. Clear out that winter bush or brush with Manscaped Lawn Mower. 5.0 and watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. Embrace the season and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our special offer. Spring cleaning just doesn't apply to the nether regions. Get the full grooming experience with Manscaped's signature Beard Hedger Pro Kit plus the Handyman Electric Face Shaver. Whether you're looking to craft your signature look or clean up that neckline, these are always the right tools for the job. Go to manscaped.com and use code locked on for 20% off plus free shipping. Get 20% off and free shipping with code locked on at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code locked on at manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spring cleaning in your pants. <laughs> Is your bracket already busted? Tired of the same old daily fantasy grind? where you make a roster, cross your fingers, and then hope for the best, or losing on the last leg of your pick-a-mentry, 
Introducing Better Together, the first co cooperative daily fantasy platform where teamwork triumphs talent and you can play with your friends, not against them. Pick more or less on real-time player stats, strategize with your partner to boost your odds, and climb the leaderboard together. So grab a friend and join the social DFS movement. Download Better Together now from the App Store and sign up using promo code Locked On for a free $5 entry into any NCAA basketball contest. Remember the code Locked On because winning alone is fun, but it's better together. All right. Let me uh, let me pull up some video here for us. All right, so we got that going now. All right, D I was mentioning during one of the defensive backfields, uh, there was a safety combination. It had Achille Arnold, Kamari Ramsey. You had Prophet Brown playing the nickel. Following practice, the media, you know, we spoke with the defensive transfers, including Kamari Ramsey, Achille Arnold. This is a really deep competitive room and i i spoke to them about that um specifically Achille, and he's like yeah you know what you got to compete there's a lot of guys in there he understands that um and i brought it up because you know he's he's taking a, a risk coming from oregon state down to usc when you've got as many safeties in that room as there is so i think that's going to be an interesting room to watch throughout spring camp, as well through the summer, into fall camp. We're going to keep an eye on that. The defensive backs were working really hard on their backpedaling drills. You're going to see it. I'm going to try to describe it now before it gets there. Um, you can see Woody Marks right now working with Anthony Jones. If you're watching on YouTube, they're uh, taking kickoffs. But the defensive backs, <coughs> excuse me, it was kind of like watching a barbershop's quartet jump into the song at just the right time. So you had the guys lined up along the sideline. One defensive back would jump in and start backpedaling five to 10 yards and then sprint back to the sideline. He would do the same thing, but the next guy in line would do that. So it was like, if you know how a barber, uh, barbershop quartet song goes, everybody jumps in and they have their own chorus. It's that kind of it's that kind of routine. You'll see it pop up. One guy starts, second guy jumps in, third guy jumps in. Eventually, you've got four guys doing the routine, but it's kind of like a staggered chorus line. You'll see it. You'll understand. <clears throat> it, it's really a test of endurance. And look, the other thing, the practice field, it's not in the greatest shape. Guys are losing their footing, slipping a lot. I don't know if they didn't have the right cleats on. Or if it was just that part of the field, it seemed like everybody was slipping when they got to the sideline. Um, Coach Anthony Jones, really hands-on guy. Good type of coach, coaching, hands-on. So while the kick returners were practicing locating the ball up in the air, this uh, today they had to try and do it while they're dizzy. All right. Remember at that game as a kid that you would play with a friend, sometimes you might even play it by yourself. You would spin yourself around and around and around and around and around and around. And then you would stop yourself and you would try and walk in a straight line without falling over. <laughs> well, Coach Jones uh, was doing a modified version of that uh, where he would make the return man, you know, kind of just walk in these little mini circles, not fast, wasn't really getting dizzy. Just kind of, you know, Working, working, working. And then when the ball's in the air, Coach Jones would like turn him around and say, all right, find the ball. When he wasn't doing that, and again, this is just all concentration drill, drills. Um, when he wasn't doing that, and oh, you might get a peek of this right here. Uh, with the guy, after the guys make the, the reception on the kickoff, he would pick up some tennis balls and throw it at the guys. Again, just keep helping the guys focus on what they're doing. There he is. There it is. There's Quentin Joyner doing the do -si do <laughs> And now he's got to find the ball. So you had Quentin Joyner. You had Jaquavius, Woody Marks. You had Makai Lemon. Zachariah Branch would join the fray. As far as the defensive line guys, they were just, they started out working out low under the, the what do you call it, the rolling tent. You know, again, stay low. Um, it's 
I don't know, it's about what, four feet maybe off the ground. And you just have to stand there. You can't, you don't want to be touching that tent as you're off the ball when the ball snapped. Get low, get under it, and get to your guy. And then after that drill, they moved over to the four man sled, doing some lunges, just working on hand placement technique, strength, that type of stuff. After practice, uh, Coach Henderson, Coach Henny, uh, he spoke with, uh, with the media and he really, most of the questions were about the uh, the recruiting success that USC had last week. This is what he said. Look, I'm just a relationship guy. And this is, he's talking about his recruiting pitch. SC sells itself. So you don't have to do anything out of the ordinary. It's just getting those guys up here and spending time with them. At the end of the day, that usually works. It's real. He also mentioned, uh, he brought up the whole Aaron Donald situation from last weekend's uh, recruiting event. Look, he said, Eric Donald's appearance at USC's practice um, on that weekend, it wasn't planned. It, he simply just came by. He just showed up out of the blue. Um, he Quote, it just happened to work out that people were able to see him, end quote. I'm not going to say that Coach Henderson was stretching the facts. However, look, let's not be naive here. No one is that lucky during a major recruiting event that saw two significant commitments come down the pipe. Aaron Donald knew when to show up. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, Coach Henney also talked about the differences between coaching at the professional level and at the college level. He said he has to remind himself constantly to, you know, remain patient, be patient, because, you know, there's times where he's got to say the same thing multiple times to a player or players. Uh, it's part of the communication process. And it's because, you know, these guys, they're younger. They're not professional. They got a lot going on. They go to class. They've got, you know, football. They've got girlfriends. A lot of going on in an 18, 19, 20 year old, you know, life. So Coach Henderson is, have, you know, he has to remind himself, hey, these aren't pros. Be patient. Take the right approach. So again, he's working on that. And I mentioned you saw uh, Coach Henny in his walk-up all decked out in Cardinal. He had on those Oakleys. It's going to be the next big thing. Players are going to show up wearing Oakleys. Watch. Like, I cannot wait to see what the recruits look like when they start showing up. Once that, start, once that stuff hits social media, they all pick up on it. They all look for that type of stuff. And we're, something else that we're starting to see at practice, um, guys wearing the yellow jerseys. Not a lot of them. I'm not going to mention names. No one is on crutches, but you know, a few guys are limited. So again, just a reminder. Okay, until Coach Riley says something specifically about a player and an injury, I or the rest of the media can't, and I'm not going to. I want to maintain my privileges at practice. On that note, the Friday rant is coming up next. This week's March Madness Bracket is uh, highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Iowa State Cyclones can only be described as a pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch and have really created a lane for themselves entering the tournament as one of the hottest teams in the country. Their run came to an end Thursday in the Sweet 16 against Illinois. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. All right, it's that time. Time for the Friday rant. I am a man of common sense. I need to understand why certain things work certain ways and why certain things don't work other ways. Right? Look, I wasn't sure if I should go on a rant about this, but 
I thought about it. And then after I got, I got the answer that I did, I'm just saying, you know what? I'm throwing caution in the wind and I'm voicing my thoughts out loud. Look, I know the rules and what we're allowed to report and when we can report it and what we see of practices. Whatever the media sees before the scheduled practice, you know, you know, we see players, former players, go up to practice all the time. We tweet it out. Hey, look who's here. It's pre-practice information. If I see a recruit, we're not going to take a picture. We're not going to tweet about it. We save that for our practice reports. So again, the rule is, if you see a recruit, don't photograph or mention by name, specifically until it's mentioned after practice in an article. That's what we do. We know how it works. So again, before practice scheduled time, start time, I saw Kyle Ford. He was walking up McClintock on his way to practice. He sees me, comes right on over, first person. Say hello, hug. Say, hey, Kyle, using your mulligan? Coming back? We just, just laughed. He knew. He went on inside. I tweeted out, what's Kyle Ford doing in practice today? Big old lies. About an hour later, I'm asked to take it down. Take, I say, Mark, can you take your tweet down? Because he's in the transfer portal, and technically he's a, he's a prospect on campus. All right. First of all, I could have put that practice, that info out after practice. No problem. So here's the thing. This is a thing that there is, it's impossible for compliance to, to control. Number one, when you're in the transfer portal, everybody knows it. It's public knowledge. And the way the NIL rules work today, you know, these young men are allowed to talk to whoever they want, wherever they want. I don't know. This specific mark, can you take this down, made no sense to me. And it basically came down that I was, the thought was I was tweeting during practice. And I said, no, look at the timestamp. So I could have put, like I said, I was, I was being accused of reporting something during practice. And so I removed it. And then I asked for a better explanation. Turns out I was right. There was no issue. I'm not mad at the person who's asking me to do it. I'm slightly miffed that it even was asked. Because USC is so afraid of breaking the rules, rules that don't even exist. This is a this is not a rule that compliance has to enforce. I don't know. It just really that it really irritated me. Anyways, I had to get that off my chest. That's my Friday rant. <laughs> I don't know why Kyle Ford was back at USC's campus. There's a good chance maybe he's testing the waters to see if uh, if you if he'd be welcome back again. Doesn't matter. I don't think there's a role for him. I really do hope he finds a place to play somewhere. Great young man. Got a lot of talent in that body. Just needs to find a place to to make it happen. He's got at least one more year of eligibility. I've got another five episodes of Locked on USC. Be back next week. By the way, you like what you heard? Like what you watched? I know you did. That's why you're here every day. Become a subscriber on YouTube. Smash that thumbs up. And do not forget to hit that bell notification button so you don't miss an episode. All of those things help the show continue to grow. And without you, I'm not here. Again, I appreciate your support. So until our next episode of Locked on USC, and I will have a basketball update for you on both men's and women's. Until then, everyone, you know what to do.